Well, it's a bright, beautiful morning out here on Big Lagoon, and we are breaking down some pallets. We're taking those, and turning them into this, and then we're turning them into boxes. Crates for our cargo hold with lids and everything, and they lock into the floors at the corners. That will get all of this junk put away into something permanent that'll also make a great bench, seat, step ladder, you name it. I love it. Oh, and the artwork on it. Yeah, got that too. Picked up one of those cheap Chinese laser etchers, and it's been at work for days now, and it's gonna have a long way to go. But it makes it simple, just pull some artwork down that you like and let it work. This one right here has been running for about 20 minutes. It's gonna take six more hours, so it is not a fast process. But there's plenty of other work to do. Let me show you something that we finished. Patrons have been submitting ideas for the panels. This one is Jacques Cousseau. A lot of people attack the sea. I make love to it. That is so French, I love that. A little ode to World War II and our veterans out there. Y'all know what that is. Karma is a bitch if you are. <laughs> this one is Aristotle. You will never do anything in this world without courage. It is the greatest quality of mind next to honor. And from one of our German crew, Marilyn Dietrich. I will not attempt it in German, but in English it means, if I could live my life again, I would make the same mistakes, but a little earlier, so I have more of it. As we learn from our mistakes. Never trying, that never fails. And an appreciation for our patrons. So if you're an active patron, uh, your name's in there somewhere. Have a spare saw blade around, you're bound to find a nail or two when you're doing this. I've already destroyed one blade here. You'll also need a bunch of heavy duty trash bags as you will haul off as much trash as you'll keep in lumber. Our forward cabin top makes a nice work area. Now you can pry the boards off and pull these nails out too, but we found it a lot faster just to cut it because by the time you pull it up, the end of the board down here is so split, it's probably not gonna be usable anyway. And that just leaves the nails in the center. And with this handy two-headed crowbar that's adjustable, you can really get in there and easily just pop those boards off. Now, not all of them will come nicely, but you know, you'll get most of them. Depends on the palette. Some palettes are nice, others are, oh man, you wonder why you even bothered. Then flip it over, do the other side, which is always worse. I wish I had a fire pit. That would make cleaning these up easy, but this is a boat. The nail removal process with a gun that's designed to remove nails. Never had one before, really enjoy having it. I've pried out enough nails in my life to know that I don't want to spend much time doing that and this makes it quick. Just put the nail into the tube, pull the trigger, piston plunges down, nail goes away. <laughs> You'll need a claw hammer too for the occasional nail that wants to be stubborn. Now, before you freak out about the nails going in the water, let me show you that, that boat right over there. See all that steel on his back deck there? That is a reef structure. He's going out to dump that in the water. And a beautiful thing it is too, because the fish, they just love it. So do the fishermen. And these particular reef structures are called chicken coops. They're made by Reef Maker. David Walter has been running that company for years now. He has a fantastic reputation in this area. So if you want more fish, you put in more reef. So yes, be an environmentalist, report offenders, but use your brain cells first. Well, there it is, 21 pallets to reduce to boards. Now we gotta cut them up and make them look a little prettier. Then we'll make crates. Oh, check out what we're doing here. Oh yeah, it's coming along nicely. Just a 
quick trip to shore to get rid of all the scrap. Okay, made a lot of sawdust, got a lot of skinny boards for the rims, and then these other piles are the biggest boards I could get out. I've learned that I can use a lot of small boards. I'm going to make some small crates too because the heavier stuff is that I put in them, the smaller the box I want it in because uh, things like hydraulic fittings and nuts and bolts and screws, those get heavy quick. It's Ron, I just picked Ron up from the airport. Ron's going to help me load pallets. Get you started early. Are you up for seafood? Anything, huh? Well, there's two dumpsters right there. <laughs> I'm using this Loctite PL3 Premium Adhesive. It's a construction adhesive, and the thing about it is it's nice and thick, so uh, it's not like glue that would just ooze out between the cracks, because I don't have a good fit between these boards, but this stuff, yeah, it gets in there and fills that gap up fine, and you only need to give it about a, oh, a few hours, and it's good enough that you can pick the board up and work with it. Jake's taking care of the numbering on all the crates so we can index them and trim and glue. Boss. Yeah, there she is. I knew I left her out here somewhere. Just coming back from taking a guest to shore. Ain't gotta find the boat again. It's cleaning the bilges. Laying down on the job, I see.
Somebody's getting an inspection. Dude, you, you ought to stop for them. There you go. I've already had my inspection. Those are a bunch of nice guys there. They work out of the Naval Air Station over there. And it's not a big deal. They just want to make sure you got life jackets, fire extinguisher, a noisemaker. You know, simple stuff. No big deal. Looks like they're going to have to move their inspection out of the middle of the channel. Yep, that's what they're doing. Because these guys get right away. Limited by draft and maneuverability. Okay, it looks like a wreck because it is, but all the plastic boxes are gone. That's just a lot of crap laying on the floor there where I sort it out inside where it goes. And some of these are still empty, so I think we're gonna squeeze it all in just fine. Well, this is all about saving space, and these little kits, if you're like me, you love them, they're from Harbor Freight. They take up a lot of space for not much product in them. So I'm going through all my stuff and bagging it up. These are keys into smaller, more confined bags. So much less space. It's like, like Zerks. You need some Zerks, but you really don't need this many. Share with a friend. Take half of them. Give the rest of them to Andy. Grub screws. Yeah, there we go. That's the way to do it. So in the end, all of those boxes become this little pile here of stuff that I might actually need. Okay, I made one double size box. I'm gonna fiberglass line the inside of this. That'll make it uh, where I can fill it with water, seawater, or fresh water, whatever I need. Test outboard engines in it, uh, that sort of thing. Keep artifacts in it. Those gotta be kept wet if they're wood when they come up, so. One like that. First part of the job is going inside the box and filling all the gaps I could find and nail holes and stuff that would allow the epoxy to leak out of it. So I think I got that done. Now I just got a few high spots I gotta grind off. I'm just gonna put resin on first because I want it to soak into these boards. You know, that's the first thing. If you put resin in then cloth, it can soak all the resin out of the cloth and leave it dry. So first coat, just resin. Picked up some low-cost polyester resin off of uh, Amazon, and that's the hardener. It's MAKP, and this is just polyester. You'll find it a lot cheaper than epoxy. And the trick is, you can put epoxy over the top of this, but you can't put this over the top of epoxy. I have a little bit of West System left over, which is really expensive stuff. So I'm going to start with this, and if I need more, I'll finish it off with the expensive stuff I got left over from uh, doing the heads downstairs. So if I do 600 milliliters. I need uh, one to one and a half percent of that for just the MEK. That's uh, that's just half a tablespoon, so it doesn't take much of that MEK. And I got about 30 minutes working time with it. Pour and roll. I can see it's already soaked in. We just keep going until we're out of material. Now I cut this, but if you want a smooth transition and you don't want a joint that's really noticeable, you want to tear the edges so you get a nice taper down on the edge of it. And it'll also stop it from keeping air bubbles trapped underneath there. For what I'm doing, this is totally unnecessary, but hey. And this piece is big enough to do two sides and stretch over part of the bottom. I don't want to get too big a piece because I could get in trouble. Better to do it in smaller steps. Start by putting another heavy coat on. Now we're going to tear the corners so 
and get it in up the bottom. Uh, stick it in far enough so I can see where that's going to be. Take a breath and then go in. You need a little fiberglass? <laughs> Never ends, mate. Never ends. Never does. Have a good day. Thank you. See you, mate. That is a beautiful warm cat. And he built it. Bravo to Ross down there at Life on the Holes. <laughs> Made a whole boat out of fiberglass. So glad that's not me. All right, we're done for today. Oh, I'm so glad. Just a little bit more and done. And I don't even want to keep the fiberglass. Maybe I'll give it to Andy. Maybe he'll do something with it. And if you're not familiar with Andy, he's building a barge. And uh, it's uh, uh, on YouTube. It's Andrew. McDonald dot. Check him out. This is West System Epoxy. Three parts to one part. And it goes over a polyester resin just fine. No problems. Looks like you know how to sail it. Oh yeah. It's it's fast, it's quicker than it's brand new too. It's great. Glad you're enjoying it. It's quick, it's quicker than a laser. <laughs> stop strips back onto my drawers that have been broken off by crew that uh, were a little too aggressive with it. You have to lift the drawer up before you pull it out and if you jam it back in really hard with all the weight in it you can break the strip off so that's uh, part of the training manual now guys don't break the stop strips off because the drawer then likes flying out when we eel over the boat to about 25 30 degrees so that's part of the program of uh, get stuff to stay where I put it Kind of like the same thing with the boxes and i'm playing uh oh it's like solitary you know match all these things up you know some of these things go together and so i'm rearranging everything in the boxes out there just a few more pallets well it's a beautiful sunny morning out there and a special day too because the laser engraver is done after about five weeks of non-stop running, and I mean non-stop because I get up in the middle of the night and put a new pattern on, that is the last one. I am not engraving, you know, just lines, it's all images, so it goes back and forth and it only advances like 0.8 millimeters each time it goes across. So this one here was, oh wow, I think this is the longest one yet. This is like 37 hours to get that done. But you don't have to sit there and watch it. But if I was trying to make money with them, I'd have five or six of them. So I'm very impressed with the cheapest one that I could buy. And look at this. This is great. Let me get some lights on here first. Everything is put away in its place. There's going to be some more arrangement, but it's basically done. And I love this. I have my mask and my hose and everything, my wetsuit fins. And for another dive or two, all packed away in there so it can easily come out. And then every one of these boxes has been inventoried. So in my phone, I have a list of what's inside of each of these crates. And uh, yeah, it's, it's lovely. And you know, I can sit on top of these. I can stand on top of them. They're much more durable than, that one still has a lot of room in it. That's electrical and crippers and that sort of thing. Um, so I like it. I just gotta get rid of a few more things to figure a place to put them. But it's coming along lovely. It's the first time I've seen my cargo hole in a condition that's kind of like, what it's going to be in. This is my uh, uh, lathe tools, which are right there. That's welding stuff. So 
Yeah, I got this pile of lumber, so that's the next thing is to, uh, I got lots of little shelves I want and some spice holders and other stuff, so that goes away with those projects. And it's a worktop too, because this long line of crates right here, it's gonna be the work table for the ROV that's hanging up over there, and I've just got a new, um, oh, I, I think I'm gonna put, uh, oh, what's it called, uh, uh, Raspberry Pi computer into it. So yeah, I gotta get back to learning my programming and so forth, but that's on the list too. Further down, but at least we have a place to work on it and all the parts for it are on these two crates over here. So I like a little organization. Let me show you some of the features of this and why I like them so much better than plastic boxes. You see, I got these rails on the back side that supports the lid really good, but it also allows it to lock in to even two crates up here on the top. These top ones are small ones. And so now that lid doesn't slide off. Each of these has trim around all sides of it and there's a gap between them because down on the floor I got cleats and those bolt into the floors and then each box locks into the box below it so the whole stack is locked up. And, and in between them, see I'll have these cleats too. I don't have one there, but there's one there. But that gives you room to slide your fingers in between the crates and then this trim up here on the top so you can hook your fingers underneath that so you got a handle. So it doesn't matter how you grab the crate, you always have a handle for it. And you can stack it on top of the others and get into the next one below or pile them off. And the small ones here, they're dearly loaded down with heavier stuff. This one's a lightweight one, but there's paint supplies underneath that. So beautiful to be able to get in and get around and rearrange them. I'll use them as sawhorses. I'll use them as benches. Uh, you know, the idea is to have everything have two or more uses on a boat. So they're so much better than the plastic ones that were in here before that going to love it. They should last us for years. And if we're going down, hey, they're wooden crates. They float. And it did take that laser engraver a long time to get her job done, but you know, it doesn't matter. We're building the crates and doing other things. So it was uh, worth the wait. Now we've got slogans and sayings and artwork on them. And even a thank you to our patrons. I appreciate it, people. Thank you very much. And it's even into the shop too. I pulled every drawer out and rearranged stuff in it. This is the first time I've seen that much countertop at all. Most of this is just stuff that I'm going to find new homes for. Same thing on this side. I'm going to give that away. And this space is going to take that CNC mill because it has a little more room. And it'll allow me to access back in there to the uh, inverters and mainly the water maker back in there. So I'll be able to get to that. And that's going to raise the question of uh, how's the water maker working and I, I don't know I haven't even turned the thing on yet because once you turn it on you got to pick it and take care of it and all that and it's been raining fine here I've you know I'm in Florida so I've got two full water tanks now and I use water like a land lover I take showers do uh, laundry it doesn't make any difference because I'm not gonna run out of water with just uh, just me on the boat so uh, I got plenty I did top it up when we went over to Tampa because I like leaving with uh, you know full tanks you don't want to have a problem with one tank and then find Find out that you only got a little bit in the other tank so that's it oh I, look at this I even got room down here on the floor for stuff so that may be where we keep our table saw I'm gonna make little locks that uh, lock into my grates down here on the floor maybe just a cleat uh, screwed down I don't know but that's the next step is all these little things I got to take care of like a spice rack and oh the captain's chair up top that needs to be done and I was watching the uh, uh, Facebook the other day and a bomb he, he lives right here in Pensacola he made this bracket that's perfect it's like it's yeah I could weld it onto the post and a pipe goes through it and I could clamp a post the pipe on and you know that could level the seat he made it for his Starlink antenna, but the funny thing was he made it out of a piece of aluminum that I took him uh, last year. It's because I had way too much of that bar on the on the boat here. But I have some of that bar too, and now he's showing me how to make this thing. So thank you, A-Bomb. If you don't know him, check his channel out. He's, he's one of the nicest guys on YouTube. He has now moved into uh, CNC work. He, he used to be fantastic. I used to love watching him turn those massive pieces of, of uh, cold rolled steel on a massive lathe. Now he's doing CNC and learning fusion so it's a whole new channel and it's taking us into the new era yeah something I need to be doing too so I may draw up a little part and take some of my stock over there and have him mill it up for me because his machines oh they're a lot nicer than mine but anyway I hope you guys have been out in your shop making stuff and enjoying spring weather maybe the Navy's flying jets over you too but anyway I hope you're having a great time and making the best of this life because you got to remember it's short get out there take care and when you make something send us a photo we'll put it on the end of our video because you can be an inspiration to others by sharing your products and ideas thanks guys
There's a boat I recognize, that's Woody Woodcraft. This guy moves around the world sailing that little boat in every little harbor he can find. Hey, you're on Port Tack, you got a yearly giveaway boat. She looks beautiful as always. Ah, y'all come see the cargo hole, it's actually straightened out now. Uh, I will, maybe I'll make a couple of reaches and then uh, if you don't mind tie up and come aboard. Not a bit. Yeah, speaking of sharing your projects, he built that. 